now uh, again leadership development program uh, and i would like to request dr sushmita kaushik is here dr r oni krishan nair please come in the front dr himanshu mehta sir dr ranbir bhattacharya Oni Krishan, can you come this side? Dr. Ragini Parekh, Dr. Kopal S. Pillai, Dr. Gopal S. Pillai, Dr. Jignesh Bhaichand Taswala, Can I call upon Dr. Vidya? In the ARC panel with me will be shortly Dr. Srinivas Joshi, Dr. Rohit Saxena and Dr. Anaga Harur. So we have three presenters today, Dr. Vyal Raj Shekhar, Dr. Ritika Sachdev and Dr. Shriyas Ramamurthy. And we'll begin with the first presentation. I would like to invite Dr. Vyal Raj Shekhar. Dr. Vyal Raj Shekhar is there. No, he's not here. So we'll call upon the next speaker. Dr. Ritika is here. Dr. Ritika Sachdev. Huh? Shreyas, next. Huh? Dr. Ritika will be speaking on how do I develop system for marketing and promotional activities. Dr. Ritika is a senior consultant and a partner of Center for Sight, which is a, a group of eye hospitals in India. And... Uh, Dr. Ritika will be speaking on how do I develop symptoms for uh, systems for marketing and promotional activities. Audio visual, please. Slides. Uh, very uh, good morning to all of you. I'll, uh, I'll the slides come on. I'll just be talking about uh, sales and marketing functioning at Center for Sight, and some of these obviously come from a perspective of my decade-long experience here. Uh, we are. Welcome, ma'am. We'd like to welcome Dr. Sushmita Kaushik. So, a uh, lot of my, uh, uh, you know, the talk will have uh, some perspective. It's not really factual, it's more experiential. So, that is a disclaimer I have at the onset. Uh, Starting with sales and marketing, I think uh, the presentation runs on two core beliefs that I carry. One is that sales and marketing are integral functions of any business, and we are all in the business of ophthalmology. Mm -hmm. Sales and marketing are often looked at with negative connotations. However, they are an important part of your business, and they have to be done right. Every doctor has been marketing himself. The fact that you are presenting in conferences, you are speaking well to the patient, you are creating a goodwill in the patient is all a form of marketing. Even the fact that an AIOS election is a personal brand marketing. So this is all done, has been done in various ways. It has become a larger scale and more system systematic approach. And it's time that we accept that and use it to leverage the, our strengths in the business. Uh, marketing succeeds when marketing, sales and operations, both, uh, all three talk together. Marketing is basically creating a perception in the mind of the prospective customer about you. 
what do they think about you for example i may never have visited arvind i hospital but as a patient but i carry a brand that this is what arvind means to me so you create an external in the entire external environment a perception or feeling about yourself and that is the brand that you carry it may be on a national level a local level but there is this external feeling that is the marketing if the marketing is positive it really helps the sales what does the sales do if somebody has a positive perception about your brand the job of the sales team is to convert that prospective customer into a real customer and make him walk into your door but whatever expectation you have built in the mind of the patient if your brand is not authentic and your operations doesn't carry the same values that you are communicating in marketing and sales you are doing a disservice to yourself and the patient because your journey will collapse so talk the same language and know who you are and be authentic so this is really the journey when you market of brand discovery when you are aware of who you are and authentically know how to communicate it to the patient then you are creating a brand you have to after the discovery create content which is in line with the brand personality that you have and then find the channel for example if i have created content i have to make it reach to the end customer through newspaper through radio through talk shows or whatever media you feel works in your local geography so as a brand discovery this is just to make you understand we also want to know how people feel you you know it's not about what you're saying about yourself it's what what people are feeling who you are so market surveys are actually uh, small market surveys are a very useful thing they tell you about your brand awareness your brand perception and an idea about market share so th- these are typical brands let me just break it down in the context of ophthalmology now i think the biggest brand in ophthalmology was vasan eye care one of the biggest national brands and how they position themselves was the regular guy i am your everyday hero aam aadmi brand come to me for anything small big try and reach me first because i am available and easily accessible so if you look at the figures 33% of their revenue came simply from selling spectacles so people were not afraid of going to vasan it was the aam aadmi brand so it was the regular guy brand our surgical conversion is very high our footprint in terms of opd may be low but people come to us with a very high intent of getting operated and when we did our market survey we realized people think that we are the last word in eye care from eye cancer to complex eye diseases go to center for sight par khujli pani ke liye wahan mat jao wait karna pad sakta hai ya appointment mushkil se milti hai or they have star doctors so our brand positioning was hero that you know complex eye diseases we were not the most affordable we never positioned ourselves as the most affordable but we position ourselves as the last word in eye care for example if you meet dr santosh at banjara hills you are basically being referred from across the country or you if you meet dr mahipal at delhi so our brand positioning was largely the hero uh i would say narayan netrale has developed its unique proposition as explorer and creator uh arvind eye hospital has a brand positioning as the sage because they are on a mission so it's a very mission driven organization so these are personalities that make you stand out today modi is a distinct personality so once you develop a brand personality and a brand tone it's easier to stand out and you also develop a system in your marketing so that your communication is consistent otherwise you give mixed signals and if you can't really tell people who you are they will never know how to feel about you so once that is done you will have a brand tonality for example our hero positioning kind of forced us to be very formal and like um, uh, we were mentioning in the previous session rahil had a very a very good lasik positioning where he was he, he has created a great positioning for lasik uh, by creating youtube videos which are more speaking to the younger generation so we realized that our super speciality position is taking away from our refractive business so we are now in the process of creating a sub brand called planet lasik where instead of the hero position we're going to take the magician position positioning which is transform your life and we are going to have a more casual kind of a conversation because you're targeting a different audience it is younger versus the cataract audience which is older and of course like i said brand behavior 
if you want to take a hero position you have to ensure that you have the right doctors the right technology so we built if you see my first slide these were the three values that we told our staff these are our three values talent trust and technology we will have top talent we will have top technology and we will always do what's right for the patient so we we don't here talk about being affordable uh we are affordable but we are not the that's not our usp that we are the lowest cost so talent trust and technology were the three value systems and please note that talent was a word used so that it encompasses not just the doctors but the entire staff because brand behavior does not come just from the doctors it comes from the guard at the front gate to the last uh, you know the doctor interaction so hence technology not equipment technology right from your appointment and call center to the machine that you operate the patient with and trust because you cannot maintain a hero positioning by do taking short term decisions and trust is only earned when you build to last so uh, then again coming to uh, the content content please note that there has to be a consistency in the content use a primary color or the logo colors don't change them we have secondary colors and i always keep telling my creative team you know please use a new creative i am bored of seeing this they keep telling me you don't have a budget like airtel and vodafone you may be bored of seeing it but it has yet to get enough eyeballs for it to have brand recall so you actually sometimes don't need to change your creatives for a year in fact digital campaigns get optimized the longer they run because you 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 basically see how well the audience is responding to your creative and that is how you work on so we realize that a lot of people use shutterstock images and we also use shutterstock images so people were using ads to create similarity so we did a simple photo shoots cost 25 30 000 rupees but then your models are your own so and we had a white coat doctor so um, especially on digital media the content that was working well for us was direct like an eye doctor examining a patient on a slit lamp because people are viewing you 80% on the mobile phone small size right so you have to have direct content so we did our own photo shoot because then it becomes our own intellectual property so the recall is strong you know that if you see this image it has to belong to center for side we place our logo in a particular place so the recall has to be stronger and one thing that i i have learned from another corporate organization without naming the, they have products like if you look at samsung also uh, you have phones and products sometimes we look at the overall revenue of a center especially if you have a refractive unit break it down refractive revenue retina revenue cataract revenue and focus on the product if my cataract is doing very well and refractive is not doing well i cannot increase the marketing for cataract and if expect refractive to do better so please have a separate kind of a product vertical and that is a way forward in marketing to have a product uh, led approach um and now what channel to use you should know where your patients are right so if you're targeting an older generation a newspaper may work uh, facebook actually now has 40 plus people and the younger people have moved to instagram so you may do cataract Uh, conversations on facebook and lasic conversation on instagram so know where your audience is and that's where you meet them right uh so this is how we and whatever you're doing you have to measure the roi so capture the source and measure the roi ask your front office to get a patient to fill a form that how did he get to know about you ask your call center also and you can if you have the ability to do market surveys that is something you can do um brand awareness and top of mind recall is something that you can measure by indirect indicators like what is your website traffic what is your call load what is your new patient footfall the future really with all these nmc coming in is to really mine your own data and develop a crm because you cannot be dependent on facebook always for giving you data these are short term strategies you have to have a robust system of crm these are tools that are available for a few thousand capture your patient data we have the luxury that a patient will always give give us authentic phone number right so through that phone number nurture the lead uh and of course we have simple things like capturing source example if a sales team has met xyz doctor and said that you know partner with us you are a diabetic we'll send you our diabetes you send us your eye we give the patient uh, the doctor a qr code 
So he can just scan the QR code, enter the patient detail and when the patient comes, we send thank you for the referral, this is the eye report of the patient, so that you have a conversation. And it can be tech enabled without a significant cost because today even a, you know, a grocer or a chai stall knows how to read a QR code. Um, like I said, we were all looking at a digital first. Yes, maybe we get off social media, but then we'll have to develop systems of our own. A website will always be a very important pivot. Social media, people are spending 280 minutes a day uh, and you have to be on social media. Social posts are for engagement, but you also have lead generation there, wherein you may do Facebook ads. For example, inviting for a cataract checkup. This is where vernacular works very well because these are, can be localized to a small area and the spend can be less if you target it better. But now Facebook is making targeting illegal. For example, if somebody, you, you know, you don't have interests, but slowly it will become more difficult. So what you can do, of course, is like to like marketing or CRM, because if somebody is your patient, his ecosystem, family and friends are more likely to be in the same circle and to visit you. So that is where the, this CRM will become more important. Um, I'll just skip this for lack of, whenever you spend money on digital, the great thing is you can always calculate your returns on Google AdWords, on Facebook Manager. So, and if you're planning a campaign for a few lakhs, always do a beta testing. For example, if we're doing a LASIK campaign, we did not want to offer a free LASIK workup because we felt free is going to get us low qualified leads but we started getting less leads with a LASIK workup for 500 only versus a free LASIK workup. And we get started getting less leads, more expensive leads, so it was counterintuitive. So we changed it back. On World Side Day, if, for example, we, uh, if you want to do a digital camp, invite people in-house, free OPD, you know, people can start trolling you uh, or anything. So what, uh, instead of a digital free OPD, we gave it a social twist that we have 20 free slots of OPD every day, right? For anybody in need, please visit us using this slot. So what did that do to the free OPD? Or you can make 20 to 100 also. I'm just giving a figurative figure. It gave the free OPD a social angle. People liked the post. Once you like, other people see it. So it is the same content. And free OPD was not in line with our hero theme. Because, you know, heroes are not going to invite people. So it, it did not resonate with our brand. So we created that, yes, sometimes we run out of OPTC laws, 20 are dedicated for you. So this, you have to eventually curate the content and it makes a lot of difference. It's the same offer. Come visit us, we will wave off your OPD charges. So that really made a difference. Uh, like I said, next gen is to manage your leads using WhatsApp, SMS, email marketing, call center. Uh, sales it never happens sometimes in a single touch point. It requires multiple touch points. Certain studies of selling a product, this is not healthcare, say that you need an average of 15 to 21 meetings to make a sale. So you cannot expect a single meeting. A LASIK decision sometimes takes one year. So multiple touch points, be it a camp that you've done, followed up with a WhatsApp, followed up with an emailer, this is basically lead nurturing. So don't just dip your feet and get a lead, nurture the lead, otherwise it's just money wasted. Um, you can create your funnel channel, marketing is the oldest referral source, so as to say, be it optical stores, general physicians, panel and corporate business. Now, we as a, a corporate are, can never be very strong on um, referrals because we need a transparent system and processes which referral actually um, is sometimes very difficult for us to manage. So how do you get better if you have this obstacle, so as to say? I keep telling my team, you, you have the advantage of a brand and the disadvantage of processes, which is not a disadvantage really, but for referral it is. So this was some case studies. For example, we do eye focus. The intent is very simple. We want a hero positioning in our community also, that we have great faculty, right? And if our community believes that, yes, we have top talent, then our hero positioning is reinforced. Tomorrow, that PG, who has been taught at eye focus, carries the CFS image, and he may start a cataract clinic, but not a LASIK or a retina setup. So we get a lot of prescriptions now refer to center for sight without a doctor name. So that is the brand positioning without the doctor positioning. 
I had a, a sales uh, representative in a center and he was an individual performer. He was never able to work with a team. It was a small center. I kept telling him that you don't have a team. How will you get enough patients? What he did was he worked on the Amway model. So he made ASHA workers and all the people, he did a small ceremony in their village. He gave them a token of respect and made them vision ambassadors. That you are in charge of this village and you have the power to send us patients. Whoever you send, we will do with a package of say this much discount or we will see for free. So he created an Amway model of ambassadors, like an RWA president. See retired people and women who are not actively engaged are community influencers. So you give them the responsibility of being a vision ambassador. So these are models that are can be created using technology and systems. But then you create a leaderboard. For example, he, he took a 50 ASHA workers and created a leaderboard that you have helped so many people with vision disability see. And so this kind of a thing costs no money as such because sales is about relationship and conversions. Um, Another advant uh, thing is, like, like I said, we are not strong on referrals. So um, one of our salesperson went to the optical stores and said, I'm not here to ask you for cataract because I know you have associations with a lot of other people. Send me your squint. Send me your more, most complex retina case, which nobody is asking you for. But if anybody comes who's hassled and doesn't know where to go, send them to us. So he started sending us squints and retina cases who, you know, had everybody has said, go to Ames. There is no other place you can go. And once we treated them, we built trust. Then he started sending us his family members for cataract. So please don't think that money is the only source of relationship building. The best way to develop associations is to help the other person in, in finding a solution for his problem. So it's not always a monetary association. We started having uh, meetings at our main center where we invited all the optometrists that we will teach you whatever doubts you have in refraction. We told them that we will see all your patients you can't refract properly. You send them to us, we will re-refract them and send them back to you. So that if it's a progressive or a child, you don't lose the patient. So part of the solution of building a relationship is to help him find a solution to his problem. Not go to him with your problem that, listen, Mr. XYZ, I need cataracts from you. Here is my card and here is how we can associate. Sorry. So uh, just ending by saying that part of developing a system is to use technology as tools. It'll help you reduce manpower cost. These are certain things like you have uh, softwares like tap miles, et cetera, where you can have the sales team conveyance automatically calculated. The places they can visit, they can take a photo and they can load it up. You can then develop a list of their clients and the list of their calls. So I'll just end with this. But thank you and I hope you all uh, enjoy sales and marketing and um, give it the respect that it deserves as a vertical. Thank you so much, thank you so much for the wonderful talk. Uh, we had so much insights. In fact, uh, recently my brother Shekhar Suman also called me and he said he was doing a promotional activity with uh, Ritika yes, for her eyes. I do videos with him, sir, because my doctors can't be, I think, engaging as Rahil. So I got Shekhar <laughs> 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 to engage the... I business. saw that. He was okay, so happy to do that. Thank you so much. So now we would like to ask the expert panel. Uh, this is a leadership development program and we have uh, youngsters over here who are looking at a whole career in front of them. On one side we have low volume, high numbers, uh, still reaching the same financial figures. On one side we have uh, centers like private centers who are openly saying we have uh, we are not a low cost center and who are still reaching the same numbers uh, what would your uh, uh, sushmita ma'am what would would your advice be to the uh, to the younger generation who are lost between should i be a low cost high volume center or high cost uh, 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 high technology center um Yeah, sorry. So, um, well, f my first advice to all the youngsters here is to be a first-class ophthalmologist. That's, That's the first true. thing. Right. So first, hone your skill and be true to what you set out to do. Branding, money, low cost, high cost is second step. So the first thing is be a first-class ophthalmologist. 
answer the question as to mujhe nazar nahi aa answer that question to that problem then think of what you're going to do about it none of us can solve all the problems of nazar nahi aa raha ourselves none of us not even one but we need to know what the problem is and then send him according to what he can afford let me put it that way to the best of his ability which will be working best for him so whether he is shekhar suman who can go to a high volume high demanding center as long as you are sure that there is somebody there who is going to take care of him or there is a poor bhaiya on the road who i know has nothing in his pocket wo madam ke paas bhej do so i have all the madam ke paas bhej do i have no problem with that but the youngster should know what to do and what he is committed to so, so like ritika said you have to make up your mind i can't tell you be a hero i can't tell you be a sage i can't tell you be a jester that is up to you i have decided to be a teacher so i have decided to bato gyan no matter what madam bahut sakt hai madam se daant padti hai madam ke samne notes bana ke jana nahi to padegi that's my problem somebody else might say yaar pagal hu main matlab usko karna nahi why the hell should i waste my time doing it let me do my job and go that is his problem so my advice to the youngsters would be make up your mind as to what you really want to do because ultimately you're going to do just that you're not going to do things according to what dr satyajit or dr ritika has told you and once you make up your mind to do that be true to whatever you do but whatever you do be a first class ophthalmologist first okay thank you so much ma'am thank you so much for those words of wisdom uh, dr tasliwal sir what are your views on the the primary question which i asked uh i absolutely echo the sentiments of what dr sushmita has said that first you have to become the first best of the ophthalmologist best of the human being also you have to have the compassion to look into it being a leader the first thing is you have to take people together be inclusive of what you are doing and in a way the uh, spreading the word outside brand building and all what ritika rightly said ke you have to help others also if you want to get a feedback the bolte hain na jo boomerang jo rehta hai it comes back so the more you do more you are going to get back this is my view in short dr unni krishnan yeah um we have uh, two sentiments man said be the best ophthalmologist sir said be the best human being so what i'd like to add is uh, ophthalmology practice like life is just uncertainty you are dropped somewhere you fall somewhere you take a corrective course in the right time what i'm trying to say is that not all of us have ended where we wanted to so you say that i want to be a high cost low volume practitioner you might end up being just the opposite you it all depends on where you're practicing what you've learned what is your skill set okay but i would like to make this point all of us start ambitions with okay i'm going to start this lasik center i aim to do 50 patients per day uh, uh this thing that thing i'll make huge amount of volumes and i'll become uh, i'll be called for all the call india conferences i'll become the president some day okay fine somewhere down the line if this doesn't work out if you do not recognize this particular point that is the fallacy not aiming to be the best or aiming to have low practice high volume high volume low, whatever it is arvind didn't become arvind because it was a certain set of circumstances and a leader who took it there and it is maintaining each institute has a different uh, i call it genotype and phenotype they plan to become something they ended up as something okay so all practitioners all youngsters they have an ambition they go for it it will click in about 20% the rest 80% will modify it along the way so mm-hmm. that's the whole point mm-hmm. dr ranbir i think uh, being dynamic is the key uh, as he mentioned that uh, because as you plan it might not never turn up that way but you have to constantly evaluate your setup every year or every quarter and see where you're heading so if you are getting high volumes uh, then you can actually become more affordable if you are getting less volume but you know that your patients are able to afford a little more then you can increase your uh, the kind of frills you give to your patient you can be a little more exclusive and give them better service so uh, it is not that what you plan at day 0 but you have to keep planning in day 3 day 6 day 9 and constantly evolve uh throughout Ra- the journey thank you ragni ma'am so basically i feel that uh, you know see we see 1 lakh patients a year 
so i feel that you know your patient will be your best brand ambassador so two things what sushmita madam said is that you have to give the best to your patient you have to treat your patient like your own parent or your own child and all that so the advantage of this is that the patient is very happy so for me a happy patient whether the patient has conjunctivitis or the patient has a complicated cataract or it's an hiv patient just laying a hand on an hiv patient and hugging the patient has ensured that every saturday i have an hiv list itself so you have to be you have to be very good to the patients as a very good ophthalmologist and do the best for the patient keeping the patient in mind like i will do a sics for a black cataract and not do a phaco because my results are very important and a happy patient brings you more patients that's how it works so just keep the patient at the center of your universe and everything else falls into place thank you ma'am yes. himanshu sir thanks i think uh, everybody gave a good advice let me say like, the topic here is leadership in today's time it's not about scientific session all of us have to be great ophthalmologists that's done after being a great ophthalmologist how do you convey to the society what is happening and what you are supposed to be doing so first of all get that out of your mind that you are supposed to be doing everything free and that you don't need money we all need money for survival let's accept it less money more money everybody keeps screaming that i you know my patient is not paying me that kind of scenario marketing you know the more 99% of ophthalmologists exactly think vice versa what the other said Ritika will be laughing her way because she'll go to the bank finally. Because the less competition she has, the more easier it is. But let's accept it. There is no harm making money, and there is no harm in marketing. Get it very clear in your mind. You are starting your practice. How will you? It's with it's you know you whistling at a beautiful girl with your eyes closed with the lights off. <laughs> it's not going to work. So you have to accept it as a part of your life. It is there to stay. Corporatization is increasing. Competition is increasing. ways and means of people are changing we have to change with time understand a very strong point lot of wisdom of 10 years that she has spoken in just 10 minutes so i guess uh, the topic the way it is all being great doctors all being teaching all doing great work after that how do you prove your worst while to the world and to your own self for your confidence for your survival for your family thank you so much sir dr vidya will take on the next talk please I'd like to invite Dr. Shreyas uh, to talk on uh, incentive and setting targets. Does it make or break? I believe this is one of the wonderful topic of the session. And uh, over to you, Dr. Shreyas. Thank you, Madam, and uh, uh, thank everyone at the ARC for this opportunity. And so, this is a challenging topic. Uh, one that. i probably the only topic that i had to really prepare for in this aios and uh, <laughs> uh, i would not still say that there is a single formula which works just like how our entire clinical practices each patient is different each surgical planning is different i think we have to be very pragmatic about how we approach this entire uh, role of setting incentives and targets this talk is essentially aimed at people who are running individual practices people who are running uh, group practices people who are running chains of few branches multiple branches it's not really for the teaching hospitals or teaching institutions because the aim of people working there is very different you uh, work in a hospital where you're going there primarily for your surgical training or for your uh, career growth in terms of your clinical experience and clinical expertise your role and your mindset there is quite different from your place where you're working as your regular job where you're looking at growing not just in terms of clinical skill but also monetarily financially and in stature as a particular individual in terms of roles responsibilities growth maturity so so many things which come into play when we are actually setting these particular incentives and targets for each and every individual really the aim is to bring the team together the goal is really to bring the team together it's to motivate them it's to encourage teamwork and while encouraging this uh, achieving while trying to achieve the goal and in uh, maintaining this teamwork you will definitely strive for excellence and the whole system is towards giving them a certain reward for achieving that excellence and at the end of the day this means faster growth 
not just for the organization but for the individual as well and it is important for the individual to recognize that they will grow in tandem with the organization that if the organization grows i will also grow with the organization and that is a thought process that needs to be inculcated in each and every member of your uh, organization for it to grow together ritika gave us a lot of inputs on how to bring patients inside but once patients are there with you it is your team in, on the ground who is going to ensure that they have an overall happy experience great experience so that they bring back more patients and for that this motivation is necessary so who do we in incentivize you can start from the center head and the center manager there might be a, a doctor a medical superintendent or it might be a, a non medical person your individual doctors who are taking care of different branches different specialties most importantly optometrists and counselors and then of course your optical and marketing teams as well and why not the entire group why not every individual staff member who may not be incentivized for every small thing that they do but there is an overall goal there is an overall goal that the each branch or each hospital tries to achieve it might be just in terms of the number of opd they have seen in a particular month it might be number of surgeries they have achieved in a particular month or it might be an overall revenue in case you just don't want to make it revenue based which we have done so in quite a few of our own centers where we look at a overall surgical number let's say last year they did 1000 surgeries this year you want them to go up to 1100 1200 whatever you, and this uh, goal or target is not set by an individual it is actually set by the team it is brought forth by that hospital team they discuss amongst themselves they set a number and they say this is what we would like to strive for we will reach this number give us a bonus for reaching that number help us to reach that number we need these aspects to reach that number so it actually makes every individual team member also think about what they are going to be doing this particular month or this year for them to reach that particular goal so let me start by individual this thing and let me try to get a little bit more into the nitty gritty about various incentive patterns what challenges are there uh, what benefits are there so the center head or center manager is really at the end of the day your true leader now it is important if you are running multiple centers to have leaders in each of these centers and it's impossible for any one particular individual to be looking into every aspect of uh, every hospital so if your de facto leader who is your center head or center manager there who's a doctor may not be a doctor depending on the type of center you're running he is responsible for the overall performance of the center good or bad he is responsible so it is important that these people are directly linked to the overall performance of the center and not just for their own individual contribution although their contribution might be most important he might be your star doctor of that center might be doing the maximum surgeries but if it uh, it comes down to only his contribution he will look at only his numbers his growth and his particular this thing rather than looking at overall what the team achieves so that doctor may have to look into what the optical person is doing what the pharmacist is doing what the receptionist is doing what the floor coordinator is doing what the counselor is doing if you want to inculcate that link it to the overall performance of that particular center there are two ways of doing it one might be revenue the other might be uh, looking into the profits now let me discuss a little bit more about uh, uh, linking it based on revenue versus linking it based on profits now the advantage of linking it based on revenue is that they concentrate more on the clinical care trying talking about the patient conversion this is quite comfortable for a lot of uh, doctors optometrists who are going to be involved in your clinical care involved in ensuring that the patient undergoes that whatever treatment is required for them at your center ensuring they have a happy or a good experience at your center but they are not in charge or not responsible for the daily running uh, costs of that particular center and they don't have any role in the daily running expenses of those centers so for those individuals basing it more on the number of surgeries or on the revenue is a better uh, deal than profit but where profit actually comes into play is people who have a direct role on maintaining the expenses so even looking at the cost of electricity the daily expenses cutting down on unnecessary consumables unnecessary costs extremely important for a efficient center to run and it is important for those individuals that they look at the uh, profits whichever way you look at it uh, into that 
not only that being aware of certain costs is important for every individual even though including the doctors it is important for them to know what is the cost to the patient versus what the hospital is getting at our center we have a standardized pricing whether it is an indian iul or a foreign iul the margin what the hospital gets is the same over an indian or a foreign iul for it at for let's be at a toric or a multifocal iul or any iul so it is important that you choose what is best for the patient without prejudice so when you directly link it to revenue sometimes there might be a unnecessary push towards high end iul or high end uh, surgery just to rake up revenue but that's really not the idea that's not the concept while you want to encourage premium procedures you want to encourage torics and multifocals or any other uh, subspeciality uh, you want to uh, switch over to the high end refractive procedures you want to offer the very best to your patient but at the very same time it's also uh, good to be conscious that while you're offering the very best to the patient are you providing an additional quality to the patient if you are delivering the very best nowadays i'm proud to say that our indian companies are giving us lenses and products which are just on par with the international ones there is i don't see any difference so when there is no difference then why not have a pattern which your own staff your own team your own doctors are aware of that and don't have any bias or prejudice be, uh, between one versus the other individual versus team performance is a point which i like to allude on if you have a group of uh, individuals either optometrists or doctors who are handling a particular specialty please make it a team they always prefer a team performance one person might be performing better than the other one person might be senior to the other fine change the ratios have a higher percentage of the overall pot going to the senior person but always make it a team based one rather than individual because this promotes better teamwork and reduces in fighting speciality based to improve the speciality work in each center uh, ensuring that it might be a, a speciality which may not be very remunerative or very revenue generating but still encouraging that speciality is really important because it builds to the overall image and overall picture striking a right balance is important knowing the mentality and temperament of that particular individual as to what they desire as to what they want for themselves is an extremely important aspect in setting these incentives and it's important that you recognize the roles and the mindset of your senior optometrists your senior doctors and uh, adjust it and fine tune it according to their needs optometrists i strongly believe are our most important facet uh in in our organization while we have excellent uh, doctors the optometrists are the backbone because at the end of the day all our counselors the senior ones are all senior optometrists the the very important thing is that they are able to give them a certain clinical counseling from a clinical angle otherwise a regular counselor uh, it becomes a more uh, commercial aspect more discussing about the cost and other angles whereas an optometrist is able to give them a clinical angle and very often i find a patient who has attended a counseling with one of our senior optometrists comes to us and then says you know that doctor said that this would be best for me i never correct them and say that no he's not a doctor and uh, he's he's only an optometrist because i feel proud of the fact that my optometrist was able to give that kind of uh, information where the patient felt he was truly listening to a doctor your doctor is in fact your best counselor the reason for having your counselors or your optometrists do this counseling is because again maybe the su sufficient amount of chair time may not be uh, given and in our system our patients once they are diagnosed by an optometrist for a particular problem they go ahead and uh, attend the counseling and then go to the doctor the reason being it becomes easy for the doctor then to discuss the nitty gritty the fi finer aspects and that really makes it uh, even better and incentivizing optometrists really uh, improves in the overall performance of the center counselors again like i already mentioned you can either have a case based uh, incentive wherein they have for the individual number of cases that they fix they really uh, look at the conversion look at the aspects of overall number of patients that they have counseled or you could have a overall strategy of the total number of surgeries done irrespective of value and that i think also works very well because here they are trying to talk to the patient about each and their individual needs and they are trying to reach an overall goal and overall number rather than trying to look at what revenue or what profits they are gaining from a particular uh, patient and that is an another strategy which works extremely well with the counseling team opticals again 
have a very very important role and they are a typical sales team i mean whatever said and done we are not doing any charity in our opticals uh, you should have an important person uh, in the opticals who analyzes and understands the needs of his optical individual team members and how they are projecting themselves to each and every patient who is able to recognize the costs the average sale price or the this thing of each and in a need of every customer so that you offer the best but at the same time uh, price it appropriately and when they are aware of all of these things the and incentivized according to it they have a, a great uh, uh, responsibility and do give do give a good performance the marketing team again are definitely tuned towards this it might be your uh, referral marketing it might be your cam team who's bringing in uh, cam surgery is corporate team people very often used to say that your uh, uh, the more the revenue more the uh, incentive for a marketing team not necessarily the case for even a camp team which is extremely important for a particular center bringing in uh, lower cost surgeries lower in procedures to that center to increase the name in that particular area they have a very very important role to play though the revenue itself may not be very high the the numbers were built to the practice and it is these patients who then uh, lead to the growth of those pack, uh, that practice so may incentivizing them on the number of surgical uh, numbers that they bring in the total number of patients that they bring in is extremely important even to those people who are going and conducting low cost camps or free camps even for that matter shreya yes, could you please yes sir yes ask so at the end of the day uh, like i was mentioning after each individual it is even the overall team that can be given you achieve a particular goal and get an additional bonus and that is where the overall team is oriented towards it your uh, r- right from your basic staff is uh, is involved in it and it need not always be money which is uh, which is a bonus it could be an award it could be a recognition it could be a elevation in post and each of these also have a great uh, role to play and i know there are organizations in our country i had the good fortune of working in one of them where there is incentives even for publications for so you publish more your uh, your appraisal is better your incentives are better and that definitely brings in a very positive overall attitude in many of these uh, individuals the main reason for having this is to bring in a sense of ownership each senior uh, member of your team feels that they partly own the hospital whether it's 5% 10% whatever it is they feel that they are uh, partners in this hospital there is a greater motivation for them to do the routine work but it is important to have adequate controls in place ensure you have good clinical audits internal audits so that ethical standards are definitely maintained and at every point of time when you're setting a goal when you're setting a target when you're setting incentive slabs if you keep reiterating the fact that you don't want a single procedure surgery investigation which the patient does not deserve to be done for that patient you keep reiterating and keep drilling it at every meeting and start with this at every meeting then automatically they they it will also in, be inculcated in them and they will maintain the ethical standards while they try to uh, achieve better patient conversion do we always have to incentivize there are a few good men and women uh, who are really not looking at uh, incentives as as the only uh, aspect of growth and i'm very happy to say we are blessed with uh, many such individuals in our organization who are an integral part but it is important that you recognize them but still reward them they should not feel left out they should not feel just because i am not concerned about my incentives or my individual uh, remuneration as much as uh, xyz that i am being left out in the overall growth do take care of them and ensure that they feel that despite whatever uh, the extra hard work and personal effort that they are putting in that they are adequately rewarded for it what can go wrong i'll finish quickly sir with this they feel that they are working more for an incentive some individuals than for their salary any additional work any additional responsibility the question is why what is in it for me so it is important that you strike the right balance it is not possible for every individual to have the same mindset to be have the same level of motivation some may say i put in the same hard work as another person but i did not achieve the same outcome so why is it that i am not getting so these are some of the flip sides which you need to keep uh in mind keep be aware of when you are setting incentives when you are setting patterns for each individual and ensure that you motivate them but at the same time it doesn't go to the overall extent 
And one good way of doing it is to have a very good multi-pronged appraisal and that your appraisal is just not based on the numbers or revenue, but the overall so many other factors which should come into play and every good organization which has a strong appraisal pattern ensures that these pay, uh, individuals who feel that they are putting in adequate hard work and are genuinely putting in hard work are rewarded uh, at the end of every year. So incentives and goals I do believe are a great motivator. It's important that we strike a balance and maintain integrity and core values while we set about uh, this entire process. Thank you so much for your attention. Thank you very much, Shresh. That was an amazing talk. And I just incidentally walked into the room and I'm really proud of you. And I think all the leaders sitting here in this hall, this young blood in an organization brings in a lot more energy to everybody. And you are the young blood sitting there. And I would want each of you to come up with different um, energizing talk over the next couple of years you are with us. Very good talk. And I would want one question to ask Ranabir, who runs another major organization and uh, again, another young blood. What is the single most downslide to incentives and targets? Shresh did allude to it. What would you say in your setup? Variable pay is always a double-edged sword. I think what Shares rightly mentioned is if any work is given extra compared to what is incentivized for, they say, what is it for me? And that happens, especially in uh, sales-based roles in opticals that you give something extra to do is like, why should I sell this or why should I promote this? Uh, so I think setting the metric for evaluation is the key for variable pay. And we have to be very careful. Uh, if the metrics are not correct, you should not have variable pay. If you are jumping it into variable pay, then th I think the metrics are the most important part of uh, the I variable. think incentives would be, there would be a basic stru uh, basic pay. On these yeah. are extra uh, things which are added on and which allows the feasibility of a person to grow. <laughs> so having said that, there is one point. Dr. Sri Ganesh, you yeah. came in late. You didn't hear much of the talk. What are your thoughts? What is the downside? Dr. Sri Ganesh is for the next session, ma'am. He is early. He is not late. He is early. Okay. <laughs> then let's hear from let's hear from Dr. Agni. Uh, no, I would hear from him. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm typically not for uh, incentivizing because uh, it's it's basically. Um, of course, you can have the carrot and the stick. That's the typical way of thinking in any business. And um, there's a song also, Hindi song, no? In uh, Three Idiots. Kadi Varna Chadi. So that's the whole thing. I mean, you incentivize, but then there's an amount of greed that comes in. And there is no end to greed. See, for everything, they will want an incentive. To do work, they will want an incentive. And then... Uh, there's a competition, unhealthy competition that they s suppose you incentivize a doctor to see more cases in the OPD, you get more or more surgery. Then they will start corrupting the staff. They will say, we will give you something if you put more appointments for us or if you convert more for us. So this is a corruption that comes in the system. So I think money is not the only driving force. If, For example, if you take missionary hospitals, I mean, there's a lot of work being done. There's a lot of passion there. I think there are higher values that need to be kind of emphasized to your staff and to your whole team rather than just money as a driving force. Because tomorrow another organization comes next to you, they pay them more, they're just going to shift. They say, I'll give you 10%, you're getting 5%, they're just going to shift. So money is a very poor motivator. And I think an organization that runs like this is heading for a downfall. I think it's a very short term kind of a solution, but over a long period, if you want, to build a strong organization, I don't think money is a factor. No, I agree, sir. Like I mentioned in my talk, the idea is not to uh, uh, give money. The idea is to reward for good performance. The idea, and I like I mentioned, the very typical example that you gave, that's the one thing which we have to stay against, is to ensure that they uh, are incentivized as a team and not as an individual. So if it is, uh, uh, I mean, especially if a team is taking care of a particular role, if it's an individual uh, responsible for a particular specialty loan person, it's okay. But if it is a team, like let's say a group of cataract surgeons, it's important that they have to have a gr uh, divided as a team so that they work together as a team and gel together as a team. The idea is that there is a su self-sustained growth model. And when they see uh, a certain growth of the organization, but they are left behind, then I think it 
uh, hurts every particular individual however good however uh, not motivated by money they are it does uh, still bother them so when they see a certain linear growth for them along with the growth of the organization they feel a certain sense of belonging a certain sense of ownership towards the hospital that they are running or being a part of and definitely helps when you are having uh, multiple centers where uh, senior individuals are actually running that center and know more about that center than yourself so they are there and they motivate each team in fact they are the ones who fight for appraisal salaries and incentives for their junior team members and that is the kind of leadership that can be inculcated in each of these individuals because they have a sense of ownership they are a promoter and they are a partner but not just an employee dr unni your thoughts um yeah what uh, shrey said and i would want dr ragni's thoughts before we can go on to the next session no uh, shrey sir was a brilliant talk i'd like to just uh, uh, just simplify to a point of oversimplification every institution needs targets so when you have targets there are two types of outcomes that is a target with an incentive that is a direct remuneration and there is a target which is unset without an incentive it's unset it goes on to performance analysis seeing how valuable the person is to you so a target is different from an incentive and then there is a one, one of the best tools i have used is an incentive without a target it sounds very strange which means that if your center is doing well you don't have it doesn't have to be a target it can be a general sharing in which you give uh, uh, employee a to employee z something um, maybe based on their performance or whatever but everybody receives something that is an incentive without a target uh, one more point i'd like to add to this uh, a very critical point where all of this goes wrong as dr anubhav said when your assessment of the employee's worth doesn't equal his own assessment of his worth that is when all the bad points of the incentive system come out in to the fore so please make sure what one thing is uh, what is say celebrating them as a team okay it is good but inside that also you could have unhappiness so when you have uh, uh, incentivization this is a challenge my main uh, weapon against that is my own personal thing i am extremely unpredictable unpredict so they they wouldn't expect the same thing every time so sometimes that have helps sometimes that doesn't help i'll just That's quickly so add a point sir i think <laughs> uh, w- w- one thing maybe i d- probably failed to mention is that make it exceedingly transparent for each individual team member about what their incentive is for or what their uh, additional bonus is for uh, very often when i interview candidates from some other center they say this is my fixed and this is my variable so if i ask him why were you given this variable he says no i was given this additional 3000 4000 or 5000 for this month because overall we did well uh, they, he doesn't know why he was given that or on what metric he was given that so being extremely transparent on uh, even at the beginning of the month if they know that if i do x number of cases or per case this is what i'm going to get and they are able to calculate in fact our staff our seniors will correct our own accounts team if there are some errors in terms of their uh, calculation so uh, transparency is extremely important along with the motivation ragini ma'am so quickly you know what i would uh, agree with shri ganesh bhai ki individual incentives are very bad because they are pitting individuals of your team against one another and then it doesn't work as a family so the center or the team or the organization would suffer but incentives as a team like my ot team performs very well because they go for camps with us and we put them as an example of how devoted they are to the patients and we give them an example that other people should work like this but in that team if i separate out an individual then he would be separated from his peers and they would not be close to him and all that so i am very much against individual incentives it's it doesn't work thank you shreyas Uh, we would move on to the next session i would like to thank dr sushmita kaushik dr unikrishan nayar dr himanshu mehta dr ranbir bhattacharya dr agni parik dr jignesh for being expert panel for this session we will now like to invite